I got some uh, interesting things. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get on with the show here. Um because and let me know if you hear any type of echo. Uh I don't have my um little earphones in, so uh with some of the stuff that I might be sharing tonight. Uh I want to thank all of you for being here. Uh even you you even uh, are here early, which is great. Um and uh, I'm starting early. I just kind of thought, you know what, I'm gonna start now because um weird stuff is going on with this particular um post you know i you know when i go through uh stream yard and i you know put all the information in and then i link it out and i put it on social media i put it on facebook and uh, i think that's all i only put it on facebook but usually when i go on facebook i can click onto something and then uh you know i can go into my app and access the link to share, you know, anywhere, you know, and uh, I couldn't do it. And it was weird. And then I went to my iPad and I couldn't do it. And I was weird. And I go, okay, that's kind of weird. And I go, okay, maybe there's just like a, a weird tech glitch to this. But then I'm hearing, uh, you know, like uh, Beth, uh, actually uh, Beth Bloomer uh, sent me a message and said that she can see people talking in the chat. Then she gets clues back into it and now she can't see it. Um, and, uh, Rudy Rue said that he didn't get a notification. So I also, uh, went out on, um, you know, I posted a picture through my, uh, cell phone and, uh, in fact, where is my cell phone? Let me just double check. Huh? That's weird. Usually I have it. I have it kind of near me. Huh? Um, that's bizarre. Hold on. Let me. I guess, I guess I don't have to really, oh, here it is. Here's my cell phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have it near me. Where is it? Uh, like I'm not hooked on to this thing. Right. I mean, it's like, where's my cell phone? Where, where's, where's the extension of everything that I own and all my reality. Okay. So let's put that right there. Just in case, uh, you know, uh, when something happens, you guys send me a text and you say you can't hear something or, or whatever. Um, Hello down there. Okay. I appreciate you starting early. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I thought, well, why not? I was ready and I was just sitting here and I let me just throw the thing, everything off. Okay. So here's where I want to start out with you guys. Cause I want to get right to the point. So I don't waste my time here. Uh, cause we can like chat all we want, but the main thing that I noticed today was, uh, I went over, first of all, I had a conversation with somebody in the UK that's been watching, watching this media and as I was talking to them, I started to flip back the pages of the sequence of events of how these people met and how they know each other. I think it's kind of odd. And I'm going to show you that footage again where, uh, you know, when Max Spears dies and, uh, and, and Miles Johnston calls into Carrie Cassidy's show, you can see at one point where he's, he, he's like, it's like he planned for Sandra Droy to get on. It wasn't like she just called randomly and she goes, Oh, I just want to, I want to say something because I know what was going on with Max, uh, before he died. And when you look at that footage, you know, Carrie acts like she's never met Sandra DeRoy before or anything like that. But if you go back to uh, Sandra DeRoy's film, 12 Strands, I showed you that Carrie Cassidy actually had a part in it. And uh, actually, Sandra left a, a message that the last video I did, the one that's like they're they're trying to defraud defraud me as a trumper, um, Sandra Dor Doroy made a comment and she complimented me on her review, and you know I said you know I showed you that one article by Ben Emily, 
okay, uh, about the um, showing of the film and how everybody was there and Miles Johnston and that Miles Johnston had filmed it. In her response, she said that Miles Johnston didn't do much at all and it was a 15 month process of filming. Okay, so here I have some questions. All right, let's just let's just go back. All right. I'm going to uh, stop this screen share right here. Hello, everybody. My lipstick's all over the place. Okay. And uh, and and I'm, I'm going to stop. Okay, so stop that screen share. Now, I want to take you. Oh, you know what? Let me, let me, let me get it. Let me get this up. No, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what I want to do. I want to take you to her comment on my video first. Uh, what uh, uh, of when she what she says all right what Sandra Duvore comments on my on my video all right so I'm gonna do a screen share here and then hopefully I can I can actually show this right to you okay so here here's here's the the video and then let's go to the comments and Sandra Duroy here she writes. Thank you for the review. It's very good. However, I was the sound and cameraman, hence the quality camera and angles are stagnant. Lack of experience, 2015 to 2016. Miles has nothing to do with this project except his diner room. I paid for and buying a new pencil boom mic from him for 120 uh, GP, G, GP, uh, G, GPB. Jazz man just came in and a few verbal advice, which camera. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Like, hold on. I got to give uh, Jasmine his, his treats. Um, I usually put them up here. Oh no, they are there. Okay. Yeah, hold on. Give me a moment. I have to step out for Jasmine. Come here, baby. Come on. Let me show you where to go. Yeah. Big boy. Okay. Sorry. You know, when the kitty comes, you have to do something about it. All right. So. Miles has nothing to do with this project except his di diner room. I paid for and buying a pencil boom mic from it for 120 GP and few verbal advice which camera to buy. He has never met any of the actors or been present at any of the shoots during 15 months. So obviously, okay, here we go. I will be posting back scenes trailer with funny moments of me with the actors. I casted Casting Carrie and her boyfriend were not my brightest ideas. I hired over the course of 15 months shooting two dozen venues in London and casted 50 actors extras. I edited 600 to plus hours over the course of six months until my eyes bled. Thanks for this. I will be casting in the future. We'll keep you in mind. Okay. All right. So now let's go back. Let's go back to uh, to uh, and look at. I want to look at her twelve strand. What she says. Let, let's look. Let's look into what she says. And by the way, I'm going to double check that you guys can hear me. Okay, you hear me. Okay, right? Okay. I, I'm I'm assuming. I'm assuming you do. Okay. This is this is uh, this is a uh, twelve strand. All right, now here, here, look what she writes, and th and this was posted on November nineteenth, two thousand eighteen. But this, but the film, this is just a repost, like it's not the date of when it was made. Awakening of Twelve Strands Manual to Forms of Manipulation, published twelve twenty five November two thousand sixteen. So eleven sixteen, well. You know, it, it published to 25th of November, 2016. So think about this. November, that was how long after um, Max Spears' death? July. She, okay, so so he died in July 2000, July 16th, 2016. And, and, and she was on the phone with Carrie Cassidy on uh, July 18th, 2016, because I'm going to show you those dates too. Okay. And she's calling in and talking about how she asked Max to be in a movie. Uh, but was it this movie? Because by the, because if you're talking about casting somebody and filming them in, 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 on July of 2016, but your release date is in November, I mean, uh, you know, you're still filming in July, like, like, like the, the, the like, okay, it's possible that after she had Carrie Cassidy, you see where I'm going here? 
it's possible that after she was on Carrie Cassidy's show that she said, hey, Carrie, you know, I gave you some information about what was going on with Max before his death. Remember me when 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 Miles brought me on? But, you know, do you want to be in my movie? Oh, you happen to be in England at the same time. So I'm going to film something with you after July 1st, July 16th, mid-July. And it's going to be able to be released on, on, on November 25th with the editing and everything. I kind of find that sort of hard. I find, I find that hard to process, really. Like, I find it hard to believe. All right. I, I've worked on films. I've worked on movies. I've, I've, you know, a lot of your time is spent on editing. I've shot on things in documentaries that like 10 years, it, it, it was going over a span of years and it's still on the cutting room floor and hasn't gone anywhere yet. You know, when you're, when you're talking about uh, film uh, projects, you, the, 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 you're going to spend almost more, uh, almost more time in post than you are uh, in, 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 in the actual uh, acting. Okay, that's odd, right? It's odd. It's really freaking odd. All right. And and I I want and, and and so here, so we so here we have a filmmaker, right? That is if you go back to my other videos, you will see like where you know uh, I talk about how that's where Derwood King comes from. Derwood King Mahone, who's also uh, talking shit about me, saying that I'm calling everybody a pedophile, okay. Um, and I'm, I'm normalizing pedophilia because I'm overusing the word that that is what he's telling his audience and how he's going to soon be on Randy Moggins show that guy in, you know, the Derwood King Mahone video, you know, I'm, I play and we talk about, we watch everything about, uh, you know, about how he's explaining that he's involved with a, uh, a, 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 um, a blood ritual sacrifice where he's, you know, kills a goat to Lucifer. And, and this is, and this is an entry for Miles Johnston. Meanwhile, also Sandra DeRoy has en entered into it. There, there's a few articles. I want to bring these up for you. Uh, there's a few articles. I want to go back to those articles again, because the articles have specific dates on them. All right. Um, that is written by uh, Ben Emily. All right. Um, Let's look at, here is, is uh, okay, I'm going to show it to you here in a second. Let me, um, let me do a screen share on that. Okay, let me do a screen share. Okay, wait. Okay, so here's, here's, here is the, again, I've shown you this before if you've been following this. And this is Jan this is January 2017, Tuesday, uh, the 24th. Okay, so this is this is, but it's already been up since 2016. But we have a little a film showing later on, and it it says right here it was filmed by Miles for uh, for the basis basis project. So it was filmed by Miles for the basis project. See coming soon. I introduced Sandra to the audience and then she came up and gave a speech and then we rolled the movie. It was slightly updated from the preview I'd seen. It had a few scenes and the sound quality was improved. Sandra is a perfectionist, blah, 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 blah. And, and so, and so that is the movie. <clears throat> okay. And then I want to go to, um, um, All right, and then and then I have go back, and then I have another one. I have another one. Uh, okay, here's in 2015. I thought this was interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this one out, and um and and do a different a different screen share with you guys. All right. Okay. Okay, here it is. All right, this is this is him talking about the film festival and, and here we go. 2015 International Basis Conference July 31st through August 2nd and then there's Max there. So Max's image is being used in this. 
Uh, talking about the basis project was founded by Miles Johnston 21 years ago to investigate the claims of several individuals who came forward to say they've involved they've been involved with secret military base, which they say lies deep underneath beneath the village of Peasmore in Berkshire. These claims are deeply disconcerting. Activities on the facility are, are alleged to include kidnapping, extrajudicial in, imprisonment, illegal human experimentation, genetic engineering, mind control, and covert research into UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Goes on. And this is the, the Basis Project Film Festival and Second International Conference 2015 was a three-day event held from Friday, July 31st to Sunday, August 1st. It brought in speakers from as far away as Germany and the United States of America and delegates from locales such as Netherlands and Switzerland. One man traveled overnight by coach from Oban, Scotland, just to be here for the final afternoon session. <clears throat> uh, see, uh, my good friend Colin gave me a lift to Oxford, blah, 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 Robert Duncan goes on and then you go in and you see and it gets to the film entries okay amateur category and he was one of the judges all right so semi pro um semi pro amateur fight of justice street eyes rush walk in case now this is this is her again Walking case during 18 minutes and 29 seconds category amateur director Sandra DeRoy fiction tackles a lot of vital issues like the gin and implants. Mentions the late Dr. Ronnie Kyle. Very good score. Chilling scenes in the psychiatrist's office. The pub scenes were filled with background noise so the dialogue was hard to hear. But maybe that's the venue's audio. Was one of the characters based on Miles Johnston. When I clicked onto this, there's no, there's, there's nothing you can't, there's nothing to watch. Okay, so nothing video unavailable. Okay, so um, all right. So this is 2015. So she's definitely been in in Miles Johnson's posse since 2015. Karen Cassidy goes to England a lot, and she and she because she does. She has a boyfriend in there. So you know, was Sandra in England at the same time that at, right after you know uh, Carrie was on her show and they quickly did something. She's a genius and she could just edit her stuff and have it ready by by November twenty fifth. I'm curious to find this out. Like where where is the relationship? Uh, you know, with with the with these people. Now I'm going to show just for fun, uh, just to just to like uh, to uh, to to you know to show you guys what. Um, on my way home from work, I won't be able to communicate for an hour or so. Babette Kern. Hey, Babette. Welcome. That's fine. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, so, yeah, just uh, you know, join in if you can. At, you know, so, okay. So, I want to, uh, you know, go back to uh, one, of my, one of my own videos that I did recently. Um, and let me, let me, let me get that ready here. Let me, let me go to where I, I find it. Oh, damn it. Okay. Um, the last one, the, this, uh, they planned to defraud me. All right. As a conspiracy, conspiracy trumper. All right. And I want to, I want to show you uh, something in it. We're going to go back. No, that's not what I want. Okay, and I want to go to the part where Carrie Cassidy is in the movie. Okay. We're going to find it. Okay, Carrie Cassidy's coming. No. Back here. Okay, let me let me see where that never happened. But boy, things go fly fast because I say something on Facebook. Okay, I don't want you to be there. Well, I'm going on. Oh, here, here it is. No, that's not it. Here. No, maybe it's more in the beginning. The guy smelling her. 
just coming out of here. I'm going to find it. There it is. Here it is. Watch. Watch this. Right. I'm the teacher for the first grade. Where did you say you're from again? We're part of the local council. Children's edition. That's her boyfriend. So there, so so you know, she casts them in the scene. So they're in the scene with her here. When was this scene filmed? Was this scene filmed before she called in to um Carrie's show, or was it filmed afterwards? Educational sector. Each year we conduct tests for first grade students. The annual IQ checks by the local children's educational sector. So uh, this is, you know, they're, they're obviously, they're, you know, looking for kids to, you know, bring into the program. Oh, look, I've Special got a message on Skype from Tehinder Gill. Let's go with this. All right. I'm just right now, right in the middle of my show, guys, right in the middle of my show, Taj thinks that he has something to say to me. All right. Let's just find out what that is. Let's find out what that is. What is it that you think you have to say, Taj? I see there when the Carrie Cassidy scene was filmed, you don't know what you're talking about. I was there. Okay, so Taj, what 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 time of the month was that? Was that before? Was that before? Was that before uh 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 Max died or afterwards? Taj, can you can you text me back? Do you have evidence? Can you, I mean, I don't know. You want to come on and talk about it? But don't say I don't know what I'm talking about, Tash, on Skype. How did you find me on Skype again, huh? Were you there, Taz? What what month was it? 2015 or 2016? I want to know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Really? I, I Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I have a right to question the fucking timeline. We want to know. Don't fucking piss me off. Tash, you got something to say? You want to say what month it is and what year it is she filmed that scene? I'd like to know. I think maybe in Sandra's documentary or whenever that's coming out because it's being postponed, your little team over there, maybe you should answer the question when Carrie Cassidy was in her film. Was it before Max died or after Max died? Cause I'm sorry, y'all a little too close for to come for comfort for me to not think that maybe some bullshit isn't happening. Huh? You wanna come at me, Tash, Mr. Soft Voice? Then you tell me when and what month she was there. I'm waiting for your answer on Skype. You wanna answer me on Skype, Tash? It was filmed when Kiri came in the UK for the Awake and Aware conference in the summer of 2016. That's when Max died, right? That's when Max died in 2016. When was the Awake and Aware conference? Let me see. Let's look at it. Awake and Aware conference in 2016. Let's look it up. September 9th, 2016 was the Awake and Aware contact, uh, conference, which was after Max died. So I guess in September, she was still shooting and she edited it before November, no, September, October, November. So she inserted her scene in, in the last minute. Well, you know what? Let's see what, if, if that's the case. I don't know what I'm talking about now. I do know what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. If that's the case, if she cast, if, if Carrie Cassidy was in her movie after, after the thing with, with the conference, the, the call with, with uh, Carrie, they made their deal 
Did well since she was there at the Awaken Aware conference. Did did Miles get off his ass and actually film that part, or did he have something else to do? Like she's claiming. No, I'm just really curious how this all falls down. How all the chips every, everybody has a little part in their movie. All right, I'm not done yet with with showing some stuff. So I'm I'm just wondering. Let me see. Anna Christie. Tash, please tell Sarah Rachel Adams to stop messing with her face now. She's starting to look like a, a, a collapsed ostrich with a wig on. Okay, there you go. He was killed, you know, 7 2016 at the Awaken Wear conference. Let's look at this. Matter of fact, this is a, a, a Project Camelot thing take a look at it for a second let's take a look let's just go ahead and take a look no i want to know you know and and you know taz why are you in here speaking for everybody like sandra like somebody like sandra and and uh and uh sarah have nothing to say just added angela donovan at the project camic malta this is in malta 2016 so there's an awaken aware in Malta. That's not in England. Uh, let me see. So her awaken aware conference was in Malta, not in England. So that that and I don't I don't think that scene was filmed in Malta. Did how did 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 uh, Sandra on her budget go to Malta, and uh, and and film and film and film uh, and film uh, Carrie Cassidy? At Malta Project Awaken Aware, Malta 2016. Okay, let's find if there's another Malta out there. Another another Awaken Aware. Let's see. Awake and Aware Conference. Uh, 2016. UK. Is it here? June 20th and 21st, it was rescheduled. Oh my goodness, that's before Max died. Let's take a look at this for a second. Oh, isn't this lovely? Isn't this lovely, Tash? Isn't this lovely? Oh my goodness. It happened in June. It happened in fucking June. Okay. Awaken Aware UK, June 20th, 2022, rescheduled to 2021. Didn't even fucking happen. Okay, this is 2020. Okay, where where is where is 2016? 2019. Awaken Aware London, 2000, August 22nd, 2016. Okay, I'm wrong. This is on Vimeo. Awaken Aware London 2016, August 22nd. Miles Johnston. Okay. So they had awake, they had an Awaken Aware conference. So so did did Carrie and Sandra meet up after talking on on the show? Did did they did they did they meet up? Huh? Did they did they did they meet up after the the wake and aware? Kathy Morgan. And so while she was doing the wake and aware in August, Sandra DeRoy was a great conference to attend this summer. This is someone's service to humanity. You found had a profound effect on my many and these significant times inspired me to search for the truth. So I'm assuming. Oh, look, she's got she's got Simon Parks is there. So I'm assuming right now. Okay. I'm assuming right now that somewhere after this conference in August, she shot that scene and that scene is is it, it she's a, a a a wizard in her editing on her own on her budget. 
And she was able to insert a scene with Carrie Cassidy and this guy in her in her play. Well, you know what? I'm sure that that's going to be the story. I I like I like to see her. Uh, I like to see her explain that though. I I I really. When is your when is Tash? Hey Tash. Hey Tash. Let me let, let me ask you something. When are you guys going to have your documentary out? Oh my God. You know, I, I've done like what? I've done what? Like, like four, four or five shows now based on Sandra DeRoy's little, little thing. Sandra DeRoy's little comment about, you know, what, what, you know, like, like it's all Miles fault and, and how she was in contact with, with Max right before his death blah, 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 blah. But she stopped at June 29th and then lost contact. And then apparently Matt, uh, J Miles, J she wanted to go to Poland because she wanted to put him in a movie. But then, um, but then I, I guess uh, Miles told her to stand down because they were going to take Max out. Apparently don't go to Poland. That's the story, right? That's a story that Sandra didn't go. And then she sat on the information and then she called in the Carrie Cassidy's house, actually sitting on the information, right? In in that right. But then they end up doing a movie in August together. She ends up being in, in, in her movie in August in her film that is apparently filmed by Miles Johnston. I, I'm sorry, no matter what you say to me, oh y'all are too little close to for comfort for me. You see, I've been in film production. And I know it doesn't work like that. Not even in porn. Okay? Not even in porn does it work that fast. <sighs> okay. Um, Holly Baglio. Holly, in case you're wondering what you walked into, Tash Skype Terry during her live stream. Yeah! Tash, okay, here's what's going on, Holly. Carrie Cassidy starred in 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 Sandra DeRoy's film that she released in uh, November of 2016, and somewhere between the time that that she called into her show to report on the events uh, leading up to Max Spears' death, somewhere after that phone call in July 16, she ended up on the Awake and Aware conference. Let me share the screen again. She's she's a guest on the Awaken Aware contest by Project Camelot in in uh, on August 22nd, 2016, freshly a little more than a month after she calls into the show to give her information. She attended it, right? All right. I showed earlier on the screen um like uh, on on YouTube when it was released, it was re re released in November, here let's look at let's look at Karen Cassidy one more time in her in her in her famous part in the movie. Let's let's look at it again. All right, I I just I just love this. Let's do it again. Okay, show Karen Cassidy in her movie with Sandra DeRoy. I'm not really familiar with this to be honest, but very well. My class starts. In this room right here. Please follow me. <laughs> oh, Carrie's an awful actress. You know, I mean, I'm sorry. You know, it's, it's almost like porn star acting. Um, so, and okay, uh, see, then, like, did you, you, hear, know, you hear what I said? It's almost like porn star acting. Well, you know what? Maybe it is, guys. And this is where we're going to go with the conversation tonight. I have more things I have to share with you. I have more things to talk about tonight. I'm glad I took a nap early, so I'm up now. Thank you for talking about this. It has been on my mind. Thank you, Holly, for being here. Thank you guys for being here. All right, so we're going to get... Sorry, I get excited about this. It's been, it's been an intense day. There's shit going on around everywhere for me. All right, and... <laughs> 
All right, so, you know, the fact that Taz tried to find me on Skype. Oh, you have one avenue that you can communicate with me. Some profile on Skype, you and I are connected on, Tash. Thanks for showing up, right? I still think it's a little too close for comfort. I got some questions about it. How did she insert a scene? When was that? Okay, August 16th, and the film comes out on November 11th. So she had, uh, went, went like, August... 22nd so that's almost the entire month's gone then you get to september and then you have september october november wow she edited an entire movie in three months after all of her filming was max supposed to have a part in this movie or was it something else that she was promising him and that's why she was going to go to poland because she was talking about a film right was it this film i mean obviously there might have still been a part if if you know if 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 he could have been in it i'm thinking it was this film right so in June, she's still filming it. So Carrie got in on this film from the conversation of this. I don't know. I have a problem with it. I want to go back one more time before I start into something else and show you, show you. When... Sandra DeRoy called into the show on Carrie Cassidy. Okay. And, and by the way, let's just, let's just go back. No, this is, this isn't the right one. Yeah, this is it. When let's, let's go into like when she calls into the show and then let's just, let's start here. Let's listen to some of it again. Okay, let me make sure I have on the right on the right thing. Okay, here we go. Since then, uh, you know, and 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 Miles is wanting to bring her into this interview. Since then, uh, Sa Sandra has, has trashed, trashed Miles, Miles almost, almost like, like saying, saying well, well, like, 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 like Miles, like Miles called, called her, you know, okay, okay, first Sandra, Sandra mentioned, mentioned about the whole, whole conflict between him and John Irwin, Irwin which I had a problem with because it wasn't accurate, but uh, I'm going to let the, that's already been talked about. And then, and then, um, and then, you know, she said that she was in contact with them and she, she she kept the information until five years now, but uh, she claims that Miles Johnston, she wanted to go to Poland in her video that she did uh, on her channel recently. And I'm sure she's going to do her documentary coming out on the 19th about it. She says that Miles told her not to go to Poland and meet, meet up with Max because he was because they were going to do this to him basically. The, that, that documentary is is now like postponed again. It was supposed to come on the nineteenth. Today is the twentieth. It still hasn't been released. It's the twenty second now. One channel has it on the twenty second. The other one has been pushed back to the twenty fourth. So they keep pushing back this this thing about Max. This information that they have for everybody keeps being extended day by day. Because there was something going down. In this phone call, she will mention that she had contact with him up until uh, Ju uh, June 29th. And then after that, like there was a friction. Like I said, we're going to listen to it. We're going to listen to this. Right. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps we can get in touch with Stuart and see if anyone... If anyone listening to this, no, I mean, I, I do want to say if anyone listening to this is in touch with Stuart Swerdlow and he has any further information uh, or Sarah, I, I'm not sure who's what Sarah's role is. I'm sorry. I don't know her. Well, Sarah, Sarah basically uh, was distraught beyond tears. When I told her on Saturday night, she absolutely collapsed in tears. She was totally distraught. Okay, and uh, I'm taking it that Sarah is Sarah a friend? Very angry. Sarah is a friend. Can you describe who Sarah is in relation to Max Spears? Who is she? Uh... Sarah, Sarah is uh, one of the so called super soldiers who became friends with um, a girlfriend's close, very close relationship with Max and appeared with Max on stage at a number of bases of conferences and and small mini events that were effectively almost like a double act and they put Sarah would do her bit and then Max would do her and his and this was really the first time they were both getting broken into talking to the general public. Okay. And they began to 
got to like that, and then they were both going to appear again at the uh, base tour 2016. But um, I was not happy that that was going to be the case because they wanted them to come up with new material. I did. I felt that they basically gate crashed onto my conference because you know I felt that look okay. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Before, it's going to get there. The we don't time. give a shit about this. And so Move I was, on. Uh, giving Max a lot of pressure. To make sure he didn't come, he wasn't going to just copy other people's material and just uh, blah 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 blah. Material, blah. Uh, original material. Okay, uh, do that, and that was the case. Have you been in touch with Sarah then since uh, Max's death? Yes, I was. I told I was the person who broke the news to her, and she was on the phone with me. Uh, we were or on uh, WhatsApp only about three or four hours ago, and she was very angry about. Squirtle connection and the prescription drugs. All right, can can I ask you? Uh, okay, if, so if I, I know Sarah I, 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 I want to point something else out about Sarah too, and the Swordlow connection and and everything. So so Sarah is upset about the fact she, Sarah's saying I don't know where Sarah got this information because if 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 Sarah had not been talking to Max for quite a few weeks. How does Sarah know that Stuart Swordlow's wife gave him some medications, prescription something or herbals? Because we went through this already on my last video, all right? I, I don't want to waste our time tonight going back in this conversation, but you guys know you've seen it. I've shown it, all right? You've all, you've all probably watched this already. All right. I, you know, I, most of us that, that are familiar with with Max's death, we saw this was this broadcast was on July uh, 18th, 2016, two days after Max died. All right. So he is saying in this video that Annie also mentioned that Stuart Swerdlow's wife gave him medication. There's also this thing about having medications or he took too much of something or whatever. And then Monica Duvall saying, it's just an accident. In the beginning of the video, Monica Duvall, he talks about how Monica Duvall's pissed off that they're talking about this because it was an accident. And 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 and, the, and our media was just trying to make a profit off of it. So this woman is, you know, in the last show, I pointed out that it, that that uh, not this one, but the last one that I did with uh, the very last one I did from two days ago. Um, you know, I I showed that. Um, uh, what was I going to say? <laughs> There's just so much here. Uh, you know, there there was uh, anyway. Um, what was I going to say on this? Anyway, let's just keep going. It'll come to my mind. All right. Oh, okay. It, it is about the prescription stuff. Oh, the Turkish, the, the Turkish Xanax, the Turkish Xanax and that was gotten in Cyprus. Monica Duval bought the Turkish Xanax in Cyprus, which was the same day that he did the uh, show with, uh, with, with uh, Christine Hart. Okay, the the one thing where they were in a cafe and the generator wasn't working right or the internet was working re working right and it struggled and he went all the way. The first part of it sucked, but he finished in the end. That show was that uh, they were in the area where allegedly the Xanax was bought. I got to ask you, why would you buy Xanax for somebody who was an addict? Like you, they convinced you, like, like, and then and then after the the show on the seventh, on the twelfth, he did that show where he couldn't breathe and stuff like that. He was sick then, and then he died later. That was the very last show he was ever on because he never made it to Christine's show. Now, uh, Christine Joanna Hart says, "Well, why do you care about that?" Well, it does matter. It does matter when you're listening to this guy talk about what happened and when and trying to figure out what, you know, if he never showed up for Christine's show, but he's sitting here on here talking like he did and muttering the waters of the sequence of events, then something's wrong, right? And I want to point out one more thing too, uh, after I show you uh, Sandra coming on here. So, so uh, one more thing, one more thing. I got one more thing about Sarah and, uh, and the whole, and the whole, um, seance or the, the, the harvesting the six hours, like, you know, the time period between they thought he was dead and not dead, but apparently allegedly Sarah's on the phone hours after his death doing a satanic ritual harvesting his 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 soul to go in a bottle of wine or milk and 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 now sandra's sitting there saying they weren't talking for each other to each others for weeks so which woman's story is real or not taj taj mr information on skype 
Taz, can you clarify that? How is it that Sarah was doing a seance talking about it on, uh, 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 not a seance, but you know, it's a ritual talking about it on your show with Vanessa Bates and everything. How is it that she was doing that hours after his death when he's, he's acting like he was the first one to tell her that he was dead and she's all distraught, but she has information about Stuart's word love. Guess what guys, guess what? This is the fucking circus. This is the circus. You're looking at a media circus. You're looking at a media circus and it's a circus on purpose. So why is it a circus? Why is this a circus? I'll tell you something else. Uh, Miles Johnston, his most recent video at the end, he, I'm going to show it. Oh, and by the way, this is fair use. This is tra it's a transformative work. We are educating the public and critiquing the video we are sharing. This is covered under fair use and allowable, allowable by law. So, I, I okay, so let's let's go back and, and listen to Mr. DeRoy call in. Because I, I played this at, at the end of my last show. And this show, it's a right up front. So, I want you guys to see her phone call. To be willing to maybe come on the on this show and talk about any... Well, I, uh, I got to speak for Sarah's entirely up to her. All right. Well, if, you, if you'd like to get in touch, if you'd like to send her an invitation, because... The idea here is there's going to be a lot of people in mourning, a lot of people with questions. Uh, and I think, you know, when you have a public person, it, there's nothing wrong with uh, bringing this to the public because this person was a public figure. Um, now, Sarah herself, is she, isn't she, if she is also a super soldier, she will have her own psychic intuition about All what's right. going on. Isn't that right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I imagine so. You imagine so. Okay. Uh, so at this time, uh, I'm, I'm, I have looked in the I chat. I'm trying to come back from Facebook, that's all. All right. Uh, I have looked in the chat. Uh, it, it looks like uh, people, people do doubt that there were prescription drugs uh, being given to Max by Stuart Seward. They say, I think maybe they're very into organics and that sort of thing. So maybe. Uh, I, think it was, uh, I think it was his wife. I mean, I, I maybe his wife acting on behalf. Between the and Max. I can't speculate on that. All right, but this information came to you via who? Sarah. So Sarah. Sarah's the one who said that he was That's being given right. some kind of medication. Yeah. No, okay, I you're gonna, you're gonna hear wasn't. you're you're gonna hear where uh you're gonna hear where Sandra Dory will say that Max did not have any contact with Sarah during like this whole time. So if Sarah's telling Miles that Stuart Swordlow's wife gave him some medication, then how does Sarah know this at this time? Okay, I'm just going to let it be. She, how is she aware of this if she is not in contact with Max? I just have that as a question. It wasn't to Monica. So Monica didn't really know about the medication or what? Monica mentions something about him taking his normal prescription. Really uh, normal from Cyprus. Normal from oh, Cyprus. Okay. That's right. Normal. Right, so his we're normal just perception. trying to get the facts here very, very clear. Um, right. And uh, very clear, time, Carrie. Get the obviously facts. Obviously, it's it's completely unknown uh, in many, many ways why he died. Uh, whether there was, as they say, foul play. Uh, it certainly is suspicious. He was a young man. Uh, he actually, as far as I can tell, he looked like he was in pretty good health um, in most interviews I've seen of him. So maybe that's a superficial aspect, but, you know, um, that does factor in. She's coming uh, up soon. The other Hang thing on. is uh, I hope you will keep in touch with us and give us updates, Miles. And, and, you know, obviously you're going to go on your own well, channel. Sandra, who was also in close contact with Max, Sandra Roy, who was the girl you met. He's the... bringing her up. Why is he bringing somebody up that is a filmmaker that was asking him to do a film with her? Like, how close in touch was she with him over, like, if it's going to be like a business thing? Like, she was close in touch up in the time. Okay. So now he's introducing Sandra himself on the show. Is she this significant to come on? Like, I really seriously don't think she said much, except for the fact that he had no contact with Sarah, which maybe that was the purpose. Yes. Okay. Uh, she is saying, please let you ask questions. 
keep popping in. If Please Marcus let you ask the question. That's the basic question, and that's a question that will have to be answered so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we don't know the time scale here. Right. We don't know whether this all happened within like five minutes. He started coughing stuff up and just collapsed, and you know that was it. Or whether this happened over a period of about an hour, or we have no idea because we don't know. Uh, uh, okay, and, and excuse Mark me, but me, you know, if, if he if he's sending Christine messages, uh, you know, about like I'm missing his show because he had a, a migraine headache. And he's telling his mother that he has a headache, and and there's a, there's a, a a film out there on that was released that was filmed on the twelfth with a woman in the background where he's having physical problems, and you and he has the gall to sit there and say they don't know the time frame of when he wasn't feeling well. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It was just an accident. It's just an accident, an right? Accident. Uh, how how would this be construed as an accident in any way? I'm just repeating what she said. Okay. All right. So there are a lot of questions. Uh, let's let's do some further investigation. I, I have a, giving a, just right here an open invitation to Stuart Swordlow. I'm going to add Sandra. Can I do that? Here we go. Yeah, I'd love okay. to have. Sandra, I want to add uh, Sandra. I want to add Sandra. Can we do that? So he has her in the posse to come on. I bet it was pre-set up. That's my guess. She's waiting to come on and make her make her statement about the facts that happened. She's online. Okay, Sandra. Hello, Sandra. I'm just right here an open invitation to Stuart Yeah, I love it. That's a big loop around there, so yeah, hi there. Sandra DeRoy, are you available? Oh, I'm not sharing you the screen. She'll Darn come it. in. She'll come in. Hold on. They're having to some issues. I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not sharing you the I'm not sharing you the screen. Hold on. Let me share the screen. Shit. Hold on. You gotta you gotta see the screen. Here I am talking about it. But you know it it it, it doesn't it doesn't matter though, really, because you've all seen it so many times. We've all seen it so many times. Just make sure I got that. I got that right. I mean, I know, I know a lot of us. Like, how 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 often have we scrubbed this information? And it's just like. I don't understand what's happening. Oh, really, Xavier? Um, well, okay, well, maybe maybe you shouldn't be trolling the channel. I've come a long time ago. All right. I don't know what your profile is, but you know, I you know, it's it, a troll would sit here at this part and say, "I don't understand what's happening." Have you ever been to my channel before? Have you followed the last field stuff? Or are you just acting like you don't understand? Huh? I'm really not in, I'm not in the mood. Matter of fact, I'm going to mute you. I'm not interested in having you speak here anymore. Block user. You're done. All right. I'm not in the mood right now. Come here and troll me and act like you don't know what the fuck's going on and you're out of here. You don't you don't know what's going on. Go look at somebody else's channel. This isn't for you. I'm I'm not really in the mood at all. Wait. Yeah, you need to turn the high. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's gaslighting. That's right. It's gaslighting. Oh, they're all showing up. Because they know something's in here. Something's going on here. Okay? Some some bullshit's happening right now. Hi, Sandra. You need to turn off your... Uh, you not hear stop listening to the show because you're now on it. <laughs> Can 
can you hear this? Okay. Okay, very good. So, Sandra, do you want to make a statement? You, you knew, uh, you knew. Shit, I'm just so paranoid. I'm not. I'm, I'm sort of like off my mark here because these people are coming at me, and I just, you know, gotta calm down. Because <laughs> we're not done. I mean, I got more shit to show you. You know, uh, Max Spears uh, fairly well, I understand. Uh, well, it was it was recent. Uh, I sort of like recently was in contact with him. Um, but uh, the last time when I was in contact with him was on the 29th of June. And up till then, uh, yeah, I, I was frequently in touch because uh, he was going to um, uh, be part of the movie that I'm working on now. So, and then and then we just uh, sort of got close, and, and we were talking about a lot of things. And uh, and and I, I just, you know, in a sense, yeah, I I'm uh, wondering about the medical thing and as well that that. Uh, he said that there were some people he was not in touch with, for example, uh, Sarah, and that he had uh, blocked her uh, for, for a long time, at least a month. So it's just, uh, you know, making sure that, that the information that you received. Did you hear? He had blocked her for several months. Did you hear what she just said? He wasn't talking to Sarah. He had blocked her for several months. But according to the BBC and Sarah, after his death, they were engaged and were making up and they were going to have a baby together. <coughs> so another thing got sensationalized publicly. Correct, but I can't confirm anything. Right, because you guys, we all know what happened with the BBC and how Sarah was his fiance and how, how you guys all tar I talked about this in your targeted groups, you know, and she went on about, you know, oh, you know, uh, you know, he dropped his cell phone in the water because, you know, I I'm so glad because they were naked pictures of me. Come on, we all know, we all know, you know, oh, the computer was wiped, uh, you know, it, it, so... Which is it? Did she not know him or is or, or or did they know each other? Like who which woman is not saying the truth? And how is it that Sandra DeRoy can be on her video? How can she be on her video that she the, that this started me to, to start looking at this stuff again? How could she be in her video uh you know saying that that um that Taj and Sarah she has Taj and, and Sarah's approval to be saying what she's saying when she's basically here telling uh, everybody that Sarah is a liar she has no relationship to uh to uh, Max at this point and that and that she has the information of what really happened at the at the sequence of the event what is the purpose of this what is the purpose for him to bring her on in the first place and uh, he even sent me a picture of him and, and Okay, Marlo. wait. I, I uh, interrupted that. I, I want to make that. sure you yeah, hear that. No. She can't confirm. She mentions the 29th. <laughs> Go back. Go back. Go back. He sent me a picture of him and, and Swarlo that evening. And he said that he, he had... Um, back a little bit so more. She's mentioning Swerdlow. Okay, shut up. You need to turn. Hi, Sandra. You need to turn off your. Uh, not stop listening to the show because you now are on it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. okay very that. good. So, Sandra, do you want to make a statement? You you knew uh, you knew Max Spears uh, fairly well. I understand. Uh. Well, it was it was recent. Uh. I sort of like recently was in contact with him, um, but uh, the last time when I was in contact with him was on the 29th of June, and up till then, uh, yeah, I, I was frequently in touch, because uh, he was going to um, uh, be part of the movie that I'm working on now, so, and then, and then we just uh, sort of got close, and, and we were talking about a lot of things, and uh, and, and I, I just, you know, in a sense, yeah, I, I'm uh, wondering about the medical thing and as well that, that that he said that there were some people he was not in touch with, for example, uh, Sarah, and that he had uh, blocked her uh, for, for a long time, at least a month. So it's just, uh, you know, making sure that, that the information that you receive is correct. But I can't confirm anything after the 29th. 
And uh, he even sent me a picture of him in, in Swarlow that evening, and he said that he, he had, um, that, that the, I, I'm trying to even find that conversation because it was typed. It was, it, it's a little bit confusing for me. I need to go back to him and scan it closely because there were other conversations after that. But, uh, yeah, he said that, that he was receiving great information that night, that they were sitting all night and talking, and he was very excited about that. And, uh, and then uh, prior, unfortunately, uh, he, 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 before we stopped being in touch, uh, it's it just, you know, just silly things, and then things were blown out of proportion, but he... He did say that he saw, saw a very strange dream of, of a, a woman uh, with long, dark hair uh, sitting in front of him. It was like sort of lucid dreaming. And, and he All right, it's a dead spot. Okay, there's a technical thing. We lose some of it, but it's going to come back. So, hold on. <laughs> I need to confirm where you're getting the info from because he wasn't in touch with everyone that, that you, you keep naming. So that's all. Sorry. No, that's great. Uh, you know, we want to get as accurate information as possible. Uh, and, and the people that knew, knew him or were close to him are certainly, uh, you know, uh, going to be in a position to make statements as to what they remember. Uh, you know, you can appreciate uh, this sort of thing went on as well with certainly the death of Prince, the death of, uh, of Robin Williams, uh, you know, the chronology and the people that know him, you know, and were in touch with the person in the last few months, uh, certainly before they die, is are always uh, important parties to being able to testify as to the state of mind, you know, as to... He was, uh, he was very happy. I was going to go and uh, see him, actually, in Poland. He said that he has sobered up and cleaned up, and I it sort of gave him advice how to, how to clean up, because I clean up myself uh, through allergic uh, reactions. I told him, for example, not to drink vodka, that he might be allergic to weed, because... You know, you might be going crazy after that to just stick to soft, you know, lighter drinks. And he was like, no, 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 I'm even quitting smoking. It's just unbelievable here. You need to come and see it. And, and you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect, but, you know, I was obviously manipulated for some reason on the 29th of June. So I stopped uh, communicating with him. But up till then, it was very intense. She was manipulated on June 29th. But, you know, so, but, so somebody manipulated the situation. All right. Now, uh, th that is like, I think the key point that I'm, I'm waiting to hear, like, wh who manipulated the situation? Like, you know, she's saying that Miles said, don't go there because they're going to do them in. So you don't want to go there. And I have a question about these people who can just get on plane tickets and go to other countries and this and that fly around everywhere. And, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't have enough money to, because of my production value, but I can go to a, get a plane ticket basically just to talk to somebody in Poland were you going to film Sandra up there? Were, were you going to go, hey, I got to finish this film. Oh, by the way, are you going to be at the Wake Aware con uh, uh, conference with Carrie? And I can just film you with Carrie. Like, why would you waste extra money just to, like, have a conversation with somebody about a movie? Like, you can't do that on Skype and make plans uh, 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 of the easiest way to come in, into the country. Like, I don't get that part of, 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 of all of this, really. Like, where is the logic and where does the money come from? All right. That's one big question I have for these guys. Yeah. So, okay. so up, again, till, and up till uh, June 29th, I stopped communicating with them. So something did happen there. Something happened uh, uh, around that time. So I'm I'm curious to see uh, Sandra's docu documentary to see hear it again. what really 
what really hey, did Sandra, go down. we're ready to see. Uh, and I wonder if she has those notes what do you got that to she say had, about or whether this? she'll be reading How those notes is it, on, her, Tash, on her documentary. That you can go and and you know exactly the filming dates for Sandra Deroy. You know when they did the film. I'm talking out of my mind. Like I, I got, I got a question. How is it, Taj? How is it that you that you know exactly when they filmed it and when, and yet you stand on the same side with Sarah, and she has a completely different story of what actually happened with Miles John with with Max Spears than Sandra Deroy does, and now. You're going to all point a finger at Miles Johnston like it's all him. Well, who who is really guilty? Is it all of you? Should you all be pointing the fingers at yourself? That's gang stalking. That's everybody working together to bring somebody down. Everybody, who It seems like everybody was in on something besides Max Spears. Am I wrong or am I just a conspiracy theorist here? Huh? The 2016 average one-way flight to Poland was $1,675. Thank you so much, Beth. Where's her receipts? You know, I, I you know, uh, Beth has been, I've seen Beth say this and like, where's her, yeah, you know what? She should show receipts. She should show, uh, you know, that maybe she actually made a phone call to Max Spears at all. Where's, where's the receipts of, of places? These people are on all different pages. Yes, they are. Um, here's Holly Baglio. What they waste on a plane ticket would keep food on my table for six months. Yeah, to run around and just do these films, targeted targeted media and 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 filmmaking. Right? Where does the money come from? None of it adds up. Why did she bring up SS? Right? Why did she bring up Stuart Swerdlow? Oh, they all got together. Well, because you know Stuart Swerdlow is a part of the story that he's in the picture with Monica Duvall and and Max, and you know now she's saying, oh, they got together. He had all this information. I have it in my notes. You know, uh, Sandra seems to have a lot of notes that she seems to look at, but then she doesn't really cough up what's really written in her notes. Even the original video that she made, she says she was looking down at notes. Well, I have notes. Really? Where are your notes? Uh, Gopher says he says a real book deal. And yeah, well, you know, Monica Duval was offering him a book deal. That's why he stayed there. She stayed at his house. Um, thank you, Gopher. And thank you, Raven. Um, Holly Baggy is talking to people. Um, Holly says, uh, I hope these people live a long life here on earth. I don't think they're going to escape punishment in the afterlife for what they've done to Max. Um, I'm going to go back. Beth. But Monica is a lovely woman. Yes, we hear that over and over and over again. Shall we just look at that little, like, let's just... That whole thing, you know, him coming on. I mean, we've, we've gone through it. I don't want to go back. I want to show you something else. I want to show you. I want to show you what, what Miles' comment on all of this is. Because he has uh, he has done, uh, he's made a comment about it. And I thought this was interesting. Let me find it here. I'll find it. Um, there it is. Here we go. It's here we go. All right. Um, he did a fast blast yesterday, and I'm gonna cue it up towards well, um, towards the end. Dolores Cahill, here of mine, uh, giving some extremely oh, terrible. Oh, don't watch this. And. Uh, Start to uh, take root and start to flower. Okay. Um, I want to share it now. So we're gonna we're gonna go with with his comment on the sequence of events. The women that used to be in his media who are kind of calling him out right now. So let's look at this. Because, because a lot of the effects won't be happening for a while, but I, I think, think you're going, going to see a very substantial start or rise in various uh, symptoms and side effects of these uh, of uh, of these things which they're, they're putting into us and uh, making sure many of us get get this these things as possible uh and it's uh, it's absolutely shocking and dreadful uh, and 
really can't, can't say too much more. more. Um, I've, I've been managed to get um, Julie Phelps's part eight that uh, on to bit shoot. They put a drastic threatens life, but they never tell you what. You know, it could be two hours. And they'll pass the situation there. Uh, there have been former colleagues and former um, here we go people on bases who have been uh, making various statements. And as I said, I've been told to to um, to um, just just let it happen. Uh, just let it happen. So, uh, He's been told. Former that colleagues and former um, a little bit farther back, be like two sentences, and that that's enough. So. Uh, that's the situation there. Uh, there have been former colleagues and former um, people on bases who have been uh, making various statements. And there'll be like two sentences and threatens life. Uh, terrible, right? Oh, it's, uh, it's absolutely shocking and dreadful. Uh, uh, and side effects of these... Uh, of, uh, of these things which they're, they're, they're putting into us and uh, making sure many of us get get this these things as possible okay let's uh, start here and it's uh, it's absolutely shocking and dreadful uh, and uh, we really can't say too much more um i've been managed to get um judy phelps's part eight that uh on to bit shoot they i just want to make sure we get all of it sorry reading a little bit life. extra but uh, terrible ray oh don't watch this they put that on bit shoot um it was instantly banned, and I got a community strike on YouTube. But they never tell you what. You know, it could be two hours, and there'll be like two sentences, and that, that's enough. So uh, that's the situation there. Uh, there have been former colleagues and former um, people on bases who have been uh, making various statements. And as I say, I've been told to, to, um, to um, just, just let it happen. Okay, uh, it really, mi so, really, Miles, uh, just let it happen. Is that I right? I think that's it for now. The main is that thing it? is the mark. Okay, is that is is that's it for now, folks? That's it. He has been told to just, you know, he's been told to just let it happen. He's been he's he's been told to just let it happen, to just let uh San the the new narrative of Sandra Deroy coming out. And and denying, uh, you know, uh, okay, where's um, where's this going? Holly, I'm sorry for what happened there with Helen. Uh, I don't know who Helen is. Okay, so 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 I just thought that that was just kind of interesting. All right, I want to show you guys something else. I'm going to take you back to an interview because here here's the deal. why okay why the inconsistency and also in in the um I, I i just don't feel like going back over that footage again if you want to you can look at it on my other videos but there's a part and everybody we all know this we were all there when max died a, a lot of you that are here we we remember the day we know we were watching what was happening on social media we know we know how we know how it came down and um it it just it just seems like like there you know there's a part where uh miles announced max death and we saw it like on a video on facebook or whatever i saw it and then a little bit later there's a post like maybe he didn't die and then and then there's this thing where then we get information yeah he's definitely dead you know, I should probably just show it to you. Let me let me just make sure that because you know what, maybe somebody's just only going to see this video. So let me uh, let let me let me let me find it. Let me let me just find that video right now and show you that part. It's a tiny little part, and it and it comes up. I, I don't know. I might not even be able to find it. it comes up. In, in the section, you know, you go to, uh, it comes up in the section where he talks about 
how that happened. Like, like there was a period of time where people thought he was dead and then he wasn't dead. And then I had Duncan O'Finian on my show. Then there was the rumor about the, the, the six hour ritual. And, uh, and then, and then there's this, and then there's the part, oh no, that's on the other video. Okay. I got it. Then there's the six hour ritual thing. Uh, you know, that apparently uh, now there's the legacy that Sarah participated in. Duncan O'Finian, like when I questioned about, well, why did they have his body for six hours? And and then Duncan O'Finian was on my show and goes, oh, that's a satanic rit ritual to harvest his soul, which might be bullshit, really, if you think about it. And um, And then we get to, let's go to here. Let's just kind of go into here. I'm going to do. Okay, so there's this time period about a confusion about his death. Sorry, uh, in terms of to get back to the Saturday night and, and when you got word, can you can you go down that road a bit? Okay, Monica, Monica Duval and the other lady, uh, Madeline, sent me. Okay, here we go. We're going to get the exact, I just hope I shared that right. Let me just make sure I, you have got to hear this again. We have the, we got to hear it again. We're going to be thorough. We're in, we're in thorough investigators here. Which I received all at the same time because I don't need to switch my phone on by like quarter past six after the we finished the passing clouds. I go through these text messages and I'm on my way. I've been making my way back to um, back to devices, which I brought all these books. Which anyway, so I need to go back in the train back a hundred, you know, a hundred fifty miles back to. Um, so uh, I get this text message. Max is dead. So I then call Madeline uh, in Poland to find out what the hell's happened. And she's very distraught, very in tears, and very emotional. Max is dead, and we're desperately trying to get hold of his next of kin, his mother, right? So uh, I then standing at a, at a tube station, and I get a call. I talk to Monica, and she is extremely distraught that they cannot revive Max. So the, the, she mentioned something about three doctors trying to revive him. He just, he's passed, he's found him, uh, passed out, not breathing. She's called in the emergency services. They're desperately trying to revive him. Now, I'm not sure it was officially declared dead at 1,600 hours of Warsaw time, which would be 6 o'clock British time, or whether it was 6 o'clock p.m. or so time. But if that was the case, it would be 8 o'clock our time. People have got to understand that from London the time to Warsaw time, there's two opinions. So what's, what's, six, what's 4 o'clock in the afternoon in Warsaw, I think is 6 o'clock in the afternoon to us. Am I getting that right? No, now? you're getting that backwards. Uh, so it's two hours later as you go yeah. east. So if you, if it, for you, when you got the call, it might have been six o'clock. If it was that late, I don't know. If you left my conference, I thought perhaps you left my conference. Well, we all left at about six o'clock, quarter past half. All right, so you left at about six British time. Then it's yeah. actually more like 8 p.m. in Warsaw. Right, okay. So, okay, well, whether, how long he'd be declared dead is relatively important here because it determines whether even conceivable that he could be revived. The bottom line is, if there's any kind of hope with somebody's death, you do your best, you do everything you can to try and revive somebody. So if somebody says there may be some hope, uh, well, let, let's wish there is hope. Now, I had to jump into a train. I was basically... Okay, so what do, you, what do you think? There's something weird that happened here. And Stuart Swerdlow was, I think, kind of pissed off at Miles and said something because uh, Miles said that he was dead 
And then there was this thing about him being in a coma and then there was hope that he was in a coma and then he was dead. And I, and I looked through this and look, I'm just being a conspiracy theorist. Okay. But I'm wondering if like they thought he was dead, they had done the deed, but then they realized that he wasn't dead. Like, okay. So they call up and they go, Oh, he's dead. Blah, 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 blah. And then they go, Oh shit. He's not dead. Right. And then they go, come back and like, oh my God, he's not dead. He's, he's still okay. And then all of a sudden they call back again and then he's like, okay, he's dead because we did it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just letting my imagination speculate, but there's, there's been something weird about this. And, and, and Miles got shit for telling people that he might still be alive or something uh online i believe by from if my memory serves right i believe it was by uh stuart swordlow so if anybody knows or confirms that or remembers it too or somebody knows it later on in the comment sections of this video uh let me know the last hour so at the start of that train journey uh monica's just before it started uh monica's voice went from crisis to possible hope. Now, that is where the confusion arose that he was actually in a coma and hadn't died. Mm -hmm. And that's all. Mm -hmm. There's then this gap of about an hour. Which I so, three people really revive crazy. him, doctors, and, you know, oh, he's definitely dead. And then all of a sudden, he might be in a coma after three doctors look at him. Okay, that's not like a fuck weird. Okay, <laughs> that's not Okay. You didn't get it by a couple of minutes or a, a thirty seconds on the phone with the with the mountains and the hills and things mm -hmm. when you're using it in mobile phone networks on them. Right. And so you know your communication isn't that good. If you're lucky, you might get the right bit of line, but you get a good signal for three or four minutes. But you're going under tunnels and all sorts of things. So basically, it was another hour and basically a half, roughly about another ninety minutes before I was able to get stable communication. And he was back home. And that's when Monica was once again extremely distraught. And he, there was no question of it at all. James, uh, uh, Max was dead. But in the meantime, people had been firing things around that he was he rock dead and it was in a coma. And the whole thing goes was completely out of hand. And that's all below me, right? Max was dead, dead. And wasn't coming back. There was a period of time when maybe there could have been some hope. That like really? Mark after the doctors? The for the next hour and a half. After the three doctors? So that all in context. Okay, fine. Basically, Max died. Okay, now did we... The afternoon of Saturday afternoon. Okay, and the information you got was that... Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong. What you relayed to me is that uh, some kind of uh, fluid was coming out. Okay, so I've got I've got more messages, all right, from Tash, and I, I haven't, and so now he's, like, angry at me because I, I wasn't paying attention. So um, I will share them with you. He says it's 5.20 a.m. in the morning there, and so he's got to go. Um, I guess you blocked me on YouTube, so I can't comment on chat. Sarah was in contact with Max up to the day before he died. I have the messages. Why haven't you shown the video where Sarah comes on Carrie's show and confronts Miles? I don't even know about that video. All right, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it and and uh, and 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 uh, and, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, look through it because who's wrong here, Taj? Is it is is Sandra making up shit and Sarah was really in contact with them and so Sarah's the victim here in this in this scenario? Like like but but why are you playing both sides of the fence? Like why why are you you know defending Sandra and you're like defending Sarah? Like like you have a conflict of interest. You got both babes on each arm here. Like why like like if you're sitting here texting me about Sarah's relationship, why did you give uh, Sandra DeRoy permission? To talk about what she's you what does Sarah say in her video her her video about this and Miles Johnson and everything like oh Taj and Sarah have given me her uh, their their blessing to say what I'm saying so did did you give her her blessing when she went on Miles show too like when she calls Carrie Cassidy after after uh Max's death are you are you blessing that are you blessing that you all are not consistent. You're not consistent. I don't care what you say or what time you go to bed, Tash, or how irritated you are at me. None of you guys make sense right now. You both you both talked in two different directions. Which is it? Which clown show are we in?
Am I wrong here? Is something wrong with me? Am I not getting something? Am I not understanding something here? I guess you're not. Why haven't you shown the video where Sarah comes on Carrie's show? Like, why haven't I? Why? I, I need to feel guilty about that shit. Why should I even like want to defend a woman who comes in and harasses me and blackmails me by telling me that she's going to tell Stephen D. Kelly that I said he's screwing underage girls? Really? Do, you, do I need to have a big fucking heart for Sarah Rachel Adams right now? Taj. Oh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know Sarah broke bread with Miles afterwards while she was on the BBC or whatever she was doing. Skyrocketing her ability to have a team of people that she can now step down from and let profit off of her empire that she's created. After Max's death. Good on her. Right? No, I'm sorry. I'm a mean girl right now. I think you guys all stink and you don't and you all don't have the right. No one, you say one thing and then you say something else. Oh, you know, Sarah's gonna come out on Instagram or whatever and tell you what an addict uh, you know, Max was and how he I heard that it's she's even claiming that he beat her. Well, you know what? Max isn't here to defend himself against you, Sarah. Now is he? I didn't touch her. Cheryl, I'm an excellent detective. <laughs> uh, you are excellent detective. You're right. The narrative does not join, but there's a silver lining, I think, soon to be revealed. I hope so. I think we're getting closer to it. You blocked me in chat. Yeah, I blocked you. Uh, I blocked both you and you. Know, when I got my new Facebook page, the my new stuff, the first thing I looked for was to block your asses. Trust me. Trust me. I, I, I honestly, I don't even, I don't want to get near you people. I have new comics, but I can't seem to access them. I'm not familiar with the ritual. I was not aware of him before the death. Yeah, they're uh, on my show. Duncan Ophidian comes out and says that, you know, they, they, I go, well, why were they keeping his body for six hours? And they were, you know, doing what? And he, and, and, you know, and they said, and I go, there was a ritual. They were doing a ritual. And, 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 and Tash has done shows about it. She was on Tash's show talking about it. Okay, here we go with the snuff film. Thank you, Raven. Because I was going to go there tonight. That's where we're going. That's where we're going tonight, guys. Because that, that's what I'm wondering. What is really, who are these people? Who are these people? Are they in porn? Are they doing porn on the dark web? Are, are they, are they doing uh, ritual snuff films? You know, because I'm going to tell you something right now. The reason why I think it, by the way, the lady who took me to Louisiana, her last name is Johnston, by the way. I'm sorry. I got to say your last name. You don't like it. Come sue me. Mm, try to get another restraining order on me that didn't work, right? For speaking on Facebook about what happened in Louisiana. Yeah, here's what they do. Somebody has that footage. Somebody wanted to watch something happen and listen to it happen on air. And it was probably set up and paid for. And what they do, this is what these people do. This is what our media does. Because this woman who contacted me, contacted me mentioning Christine Joanna Hart. Because she saw me on, on uh, Nathan Stoltman's show. Yeah, She gave money to Vegan Mikey. You know, she's all up in all this stuff, right? And she goes with me. She goes with me to, to El Cid. She buys tickets to go see um, Lee Camp. And I run into my friend Rick there. He was opening for him. She gets all drunk like I knew she was. She thinks she's going to hook up some interview for me. Actually, Rick hooked up my interview with Lee Camp. Because guess what? I can pretty much navigate myself in that world. I go and she hooks me up with a director named Lee Scott. Oh, we can look at him right now if we wanted to on the internet. I get recommended to go on Blaze TV, which is Mark Levin's channel. Okay. Uh, and, and film a comedy set. They fly me out to, to Florida. I come back. She says, oh, we're going to go to Louisiana and do. 
we want to do this project right now, Red Pill Nation, a, a conservative co uh, comedy show. I'm there for two damn weeks. All of a sudden, I don't have a meal per diem. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I was told that we were going to work on set and do things where I'm going to be paid for all these different things. They weren't going to pay me. I don't get a script to like two days beforehand. The script is written in my name. It's written in my, the way I speak. They wanted me to play some part where I was going to have a, like, I'm a loser. Like I'm making popsicle art and I'm some sort of loser, like a comedy. So, so they're mentally fucking with you. Pushing on like, and, and someone is out there having a real big fucking laugh. Like, look at the girl on the trailer. Look at, look at the girl in, in, you know, who, 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 who Hollywood won't like go through the door. You're a fucking loser. Then they bring a bong for me to smoke in the middle of the scene. And there's no weed smoking in the script. It's a surprise. And the bong is shaped like a gun and I'm lighting it. And it's going up into my mouth. And when I take a big hit. They made me take six hits. Oh, six hits. They must have loved that. They wanted me to take hit after hit. The weed is supplied to me from um, the, 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 the lighting guy. I knew in that moment when I saw the boom operator go like this and they're all watching me. I'm the big star of the day. And I went, fuck. And yeah, of course, I was probably really stoned at this point. Beyond what I should have done. I should never have smoked it. I should, it should never have been given to me on set. I start not feeling well. And it goes on from there. The story goes on from there to where grandma tries it off me by offering me grapefruit the next day and a fucking uh, croissant slathered in coconut oil. And this is really good. Take it. None of it worked. I'm still standing here. I know the shit that happens when they want to off you and make a little movie about you that somebody's paid for. Call me fucking crazy. It's the truth. And this is our media. This is the targeted individual media. These are the targeted individual filmmakers. They got fucking dead people on their hands. Not only Max Spears, but Chris Neal, who also was part of Revolution Radio. And we're going to get that. We're going to get to that. I have something I want to show y'all. I have something I, I want to show y'all. Let's show it. Because you know what? I'm a, I'm an, I, I'm a, I'm a middle-aged woman living in a fucking trailer with nothing to lose. I don't give a shit what you people think. I don't give a shit. If you want to talk to me till the high till, till the end of this time, call me whatever you want. Troll me whatever you want. I will say what I think is going on tonight. Sick of you jokers. All right. Here we go. Let me find it. Oh, that's... Oh, that's not it. Ah, oh, Rudy Rue, that's for the end. That's for the end. That's for the end of the show tonight. Okay, wait. Let me go. Here it is. Okay, the title of the show is Kevin Moore Show Interviews Terry Joyce Truth Media Porn and Dead People. All right, I think, I think, I think you guys need to need need to watch this and i'm throwing this in in there because i think this is all related to be honest with you i this this is this is our media let's feast our eyes on what our media probably is let, let let's let you know um, I, I, maybe i shouldn't say you know it's not our media let me see where where am i tw all right let's just go uh, preview SOL. Yeah, Rudy Roo. <laughs> Say it, Terry. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Holly Baglio. Uh, if SRA keeps up that hate mail, it'll start forwarding it to her client list so that they can see what she really is like before they hire her for a reading. Yeah, I think they should. I think if anybody, anybody who wants to hire Sarah Rachel Adams, you know, they should be watching, uh, the, uh, you know, watching the, our shows and and be privy to what what the real inside what what the empathic intuitive really is really all about and how she can fix you okay i'm i'm, I'm over it but here 
Let us go to Kevin Moore. Now, I, I looking at this, you're going to see how tired I look because I was going through hell. Oh, there's 33 people watching now. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> Well, I want to make sure. Did I did I do that right? I can't. I'm having trouble stopping anything. I'm I'm getting. It's getting glitchy. <laughs> it's getting glitchy. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got the. Uh, okay, I know. Thirty three people. Wow. And it decided to go to a different video in the, in that special. No, we don't want you. I'm going to have to stop it. Yeah, we want this. Here we go. And we want it to be here. All right, let me make sure I got it right. Oh, I don't have anything shared. We'll get there. Hold on. Hi guys and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now on today's show I'm about to be joined by my guest Terry Joyce. Now just to give you a bit of background on Terry, she is the host of The Freedom of Joyce Show which broadcasts on YouTube and Revolution Radio. Uh, she's a street activist and socially conscious artist who makes music, comedy and everything else in I don't between. Make music, by and the she's way. covering a number of important subjects right now music. on Wrong her show. So uh, this interview was recorded uh, a couple of weeks ago in Los Angeles and enjoy my interview with Terry Joyce. Well, Terry Joyce, thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we've just sort of reversed the table. So you've just done an interview on me, which I do appreciate. And uh, now it's my turn to speak to yourself. Um, I, I think what I'll do, I'll, I'll link the previous interview uh, just below and um, for what we do as well, because it kind of ties into this interview. So, just tell me to begin with, right? Um, you're on Freedom Radio? I'm on American Freedom Radio. American Freedom yes. Radio, okay. I I've been with them for, I think, about three years now, and the first radio, alternative oh. radio network that's in our world yeah. uh, was Revolution Radio. Uh, I was, a, I became a, a host there in 2014. What, what made you uh, get into this work then? Okay, uh, well, my background is stand-up comedy and I worked for over 25 years all over the United States and Canada, traveling and touring, and then I was a, my claim to fame is that I was now, a Now, the, the, the hand the that you see back there, standing. that is um, that is Jennifer Elsner, that is his, um, that she was there on the filming and she's the lady that claims that she's doing Sarah's readings and that Sarah's only paying her $50, okay? Which is a uh, which which was a reality show here in the United States that ran for a really long time. I don't know if they still have it going on, but uh, so I did that, and then from there uh, I ended up in a raid at a, a medical marijuana dispensary uh, by the uh, I was in the doctor's office in the same building as a medical marijuana dispensary. And the dispensary was raided, and I was held up by gunpoint by the FBI and, uh, you know, all of it. And because of the fact that I was doing a marijuana-themed show in Pasadena uh, and was getting involved politically at that time, uh, I and I had been on Last Comic Standing, I was in the cover of the Pasadena Weekly with the words, Bond Loves of Justice, and uh, I'm going to marijuana smoke and the America flag and how a DEA raid turned me into a missionary for medical marijuana. So that got me into doing alternative media. I started out on New Dissident Radio, which was basically a comedy channel that had Kelly Carlin, who was like George Carlin's daughter, was on it and various people. And I created a show called Hollywood Hemptress Hour. And from there, I was on the Time for, Time for Hemp Network. And then I was watching Carrie Cassidy and Project Camelot and a lot of the things that were online 
about the New World Order and this and that, and I followed Max Spears, uh, the Super Soldier Program, and things like this. Uh, I ended up being interviewed by uh, a host named Roxy Lopez. She did a show called The Truth Denied Night on, on, uh, on Revolution Radio. And Bernard Alvarez, they interviewed me. After I did interviews on Revolution Radio, they asked me if I wanted to be a host. At, and I kind of felt that I was leading into this direction anyways, because I wanted to talk about more than just cannabis, because that's just one little octopus of everything else that's going on, right. big pharma, everything. Uh, and so at that point, I, ch I created the Freedom of Joyce show, and I joined the uh, Alternative Radio Network. So your website is? Um, my current website at the moment is freedomofjoyce.net. It's a blog site. I haven't really blogged on it for a long time. I am going to, I do have freedomofjoyce.com. Uh, so please check me out on my new website that's coming up there. Right. So and you've got a YouTube channel as well? I do. Yeah. Uh, Terry Joyce is my YouTube okay. channel and uh, you can Freedom of Joyce show on there. Okay. Well, we'll link that again below in the description of this video. Okay. So, um, so we, we were, we, we filmed this in Altadena, California at, um, the, um, coffee gallery, which is, which is in a neighborhood that I used to live a lot at. And they were, they were in town in LA and, you know, it's going to go on here. Attention recently, because obviously I saw, I saw some of your videos. Now, where... By the way, Sarah connected me to Kevin Moore and Kevin Moore has allegedly has been doing a documentary on carrie cassidy but then he's kind of vague about it it's it, it's his documentary is really vague there's a whole nother part of this of this interview that's it's in two halves so this is first i interviewed him then he interviewed me and in my interview i said so you're doing an interview on uh, on a documentary on carrie cassidy and he kind of is a little bit nebulous about it but he's it's part of a documentary he's also going to be doing simon parks and all this kind of stuff so now he's interviewing the information that i had about these guys and he displays it and the reason why i'm showing it to you because it he displays it in a very it's it's explained in a chronological way with 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 graphics and stuff and you're going to see them and i want i want you i want to put this i want to open you up to, to to take a look at this again if you haven't already you were sort of not just going against some of the players in this field, like um, I will say Miles Johnson, Kerry Cassidy, and some other people as well. Yes. And I, I didn't pay too much attention to it, right? You should this, have. This, this, you should have. Right now has happened very um, organically, do you know what I mean? It was, yes. it was you know, it was something that we, we wanted to do, but it's, we, we have to be here in LA filming the Mark Richards documentary. So I thought, well, you know, let, let's do this as well. Um, just explain what you've discovered and what, and what it is that um okay um yes one of the things that came to my attention was within the first year of being on uh, revolution radio uh first thing i noticed was a website called uh, confessions of a former white hat uh, which was uh written or it was revealed because at some at one point nobody knew who the writer of that particular part was but it was a man named Michael Hemmingson, who apparently has connections to Michael Aquino and the Temple of Set. Now, uh, so let me get to this. When I first discovered that particular blog site, I was doing an interview of uh, a man named Stephen D. Kelly, who was also a host on Revolution Radio. Now, Stephen's story is, and Carrie Cassidy has interviewed him as well, is that he's an ex-CIA NSA contractor. Uh, his claim to make flight fame is that he made laser uh, techno guns, um, was one of the first forerunners, and that he was associated with the Albany North Gang, and some of his guns went with the Iran-Contra uh, uh, exchange. Uh, he became a whistleblower on the scene in 2012, and when I was researching him, I stumbled on a ridiculous uh, article on former White Hat where it said that he was a clone and the real Stephen D. Kelly was on ice underneath the, the museum, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, what is this? And when I interviewed him on my show, I made a joke about it. I, I thought I was joking to go, yeah, I heard you were a clone. And then he got real serious, cleared his throat and goes, uh, yeah, well, uh, that guy isn't alive anymore. Okay. Michael Hemmingson, 
left the station right before I joined Revolution Radio. Michael Huntington had a show on Revolution Radio, and he was the Mike Ringley, Mike Hawks, apparently a really good friend of his. The reason why I'm giving you this background, because it comes to play with some of the other things that I have actually discovered about Carrie Cassidy and her association to uh, Revolution Radio, Mike Ringley, and this particular website that uh, the conventions of a, of, of a former white hat. Now, what happened previously before I joined the network is there was a uh, MK Ultra asset named Chris Neal, who ended up being, uh, they said it was a suicide, but even Duncan Ophinian, who's also allegedly was spawned by Kerry Cassidy as being a super soldier, he prefers to call himself a CIA augment, augmented admin. See, Kerry Cassidy has, has coined the super soldier uh, terminology because she interviewed uh, Max Spears, who now has, who has also had a, a, a suspicious death, uh, and uh, as well as James Casbolt, who is also associated to Miles Johnston. Are you following me here on this still? Yeah, of course, James Casbolt was serving time at uh, an HM prison in the UK. He will be released, I think, in June. Yes, possibly, possibly but now yeah, they yeah. moved him to uh, a, a maximum security again. Uh, I believe that's because he has leaked uh, or communicated with somebody and made threats against other women that uh, are associated with the reason why he's in prison in the first place. So, uh, another beautiful character, yeah, go on. Okay, yes, all right, so now, uh, a while back when I was on Revolution Radio, uh, Nighthawk kind of freaked out on the channel and he was listening to an MP3 by a man who I believe it went by the name of Sonny Eugene or it's, I'm thinking Lee Beck, I'm, I'm, I'm missing on the name, but he, it, was, it was a re recorded conversation of Roxy Lopez where he was questioning Roxy whether or not she was aware that there were all these different servers uh, throughout California that were associated between Project Camelot and Revolution Radio. And she denied knowing any, uh, and having knowing any information. At the same time, the webmaster for Revolution Radio was arrested for child pornography. This is a fact. This really happened during the time that I was on the network. And God, I thought I had this on silence and apparently it wants to make noise. Uh, so, okay, <laughs> I got a little distracted. No, it's there. okay. So you were saying that. So the owner of the radio station, online station, was arrested for child pornography. The webmaster, webmaster was sorry, okay, yeah. and yeah. the sorry. there was a woman also named Kat Jenkins who was on. I saw her on a news clip because she was involved in it because she was living with him in the same place when it happened. She subsequently left the radio network. Now she was part of the administration on on it. So all this kind of went down and there was uh, Stephen D. Kelly uh, at one point pointed out to uh, Nighthawk, who, Mike Ringley, that on Facebook, he goes, where there's pedo smoke, there's pedo fire. And Nighthawk, I was still a host on the network at that time. And uh, because of my closeness uh, to Stephen D. Kelly, uh, Nighthawk approached me and brought this up to me. And uh, he says, well, I'm going to sue Stephen. I said, well, do you want me to tell him? He said, no. Well, basically, that was a setup. setup and I knew. So, so, of course, course I knew. Stephen, uh, Stephen, Stephen sat, sat on it for a while. And, and then, then I got wind of also through a Skype conversation on American Freedom Radio about Revolution Radio's association to potential some more child type of tra pornography type of situation. Now, I can't verify this for sure that that's it's actually really true or not. All I can say is that there was a conversation about it and I investigated it somewhat. Uh, I told Stephen that, Stephen made another post on Facebook. Subsequently, after that, my hawk fired me from the radio network, which I wasn't getting paid anyway, so how is it that you get fired from a job that you're not getting paid for? Anyway, so let's, that's just, I'm just giving this background because years later, a couple years later, I get an email from a man named Ben Duchesne, who 
claimed to be a higher up an ICANN, and he was following domains and subdomains that are associated with each other. And he basically said it's pretty much money laundering over the internet. He showed me some photos of screenshots of their traffic on the internet. And a light bulb went off on my head because I remembered the previous conversation, the previous time where, where Mike Greenlee was freaking out about this conversation about Kerry Cassidy and him having these servers. Well, what I've discovered, you know, through this and through looking at this evidence for a really long time is that there are, it, it, it goes all the way back to Google and mainstream media publications like Veterans Today and, and other types of, I'm not, I'm not going to go through all of them. But they are linked in domains. There's like a server that can have various domains and they have like a chain of links of, of tags and words that go to a final dot com. That's how they're. Okay, so here, these are some of the photos that he shows. And I just want to pause it for a moment. You know, here, uh, which IP numbers does the, hot, uh, the house name share? To shames here and then it goes here and then it goes secret servers it's, it's all like there's the server then there's the domains and then the names and it goes to godaddy.com but they it'll keep going hold on they're trafficking whatever traffic wherever it's going to wherever that money is going to is is, is done now if you look at the screenshots you'll see former white hat michael hemmingson revolution radio mike ringley carrie cassidy project camelot project avalon bill ryan robert stanley idlewild group idlewild group is a big deal i don't like i found like screenshots of Revolution Radio. Going See, to um, Idlewild Group, Bestiality, Scat, Clone, Carrie Cassidy, Freedom Slips, Idlewild Group. All right, former White Hat. See where? It, see, see right here. Okay. Idlewild Group says thank you. Well, the Idlewild Group is connected to former White Hat, which is connected to Michael Hemmingson, who, by the way, Michael Hemmingson is not even his real name. That's a pen name. And when I mentioned the Chris Neal person. Uh, he was outing Michael Hemmingson as being, because nobody knew who wrote former White Hat, Confessions of Former White Hat. He found out that it was Michael Hemmingson and also questioned why Carrie Caskey was associated with him. Now, I did a show, I've done shows, several shows investigating all of this and finding the dark. When I did the show on Michael Hemmingson, I have a screenshot of it. Mike Ringley says, tried to call me 30 times that day. And outed Carrie Cassidy is is paying for former White Hat. So Carrie Hat Cassidy has been behind all of this the whole time, and I'm just finding out that these subdomains are connected. This is they've all been connected this way. Um, through that, I discovered um, through Ben's research, which you can see online. I just did a video about it yesterday, going over one of his videos and reading every single thing in it because. The video is just words and images uh, because uh, English is Ben's second language. He's French Canadian. So I went and read each one. You can see where uh, Ralph Almagron, who is Alex Collier now, was actually in prison for four counts of felony against the IRS. He's actually taking people's social security numbers and using them illegally. All right, Robert Stanley from Unicus Magazine was friends with Alex Collier or Ralph Amagron before both of them became part of this media, being UFO disclosures, all right? And they are also linked as the Idlewild group because Alex Collier was from Idlewild with a bunch of other uh, people that are nefarious, doing nefarious activities. And they're, they've all been running this little scam with the front being that they're UFO people and part of the alternative media. That's what it looks like. And what's the what's the actual money, money there? Where's, what's the money being generated from and where is it going? Well, I'm not sure. That's the part that I don't know. But, but a lot of it is pornography. Uh, and again, I'm not being a prude about it. But they do have some interesting uh, domain names like 
boypenis.com, uh, you know, bestiality. Uh, there's another thing that uh, I, I'm going to say it, but it's, it's, it's shut, shut the fuck up.com. I'm shut that like they're linked to all kinds of things. Some of the links actually take you to Google. So it's, it's a beast. It looks like, and, and it's not just him, but it's also Randy Moggins from Off Planet Radio. Miles Johnston has it going on. Although Randy Moggins and Miles, Miles Johnston's websites do not necessarily link up with, with Carrie Cassidy's group. Carrie Cassidy is definitely Idlewild Group, Mike Ringley, freedomslips.com, former White Hat, Michael Hedeminson. That is often, I, I could even show you, and I mean, if you want, I can, you can intersperse this in, in later footage. Yeah, I, I think we should put some stuff on the screen so that people can see right now. Um, and also as well, you know, who's to say this information that you've got is not just been you know, planted by someone that wants some revenge on these people? It could be, but, uh, you know, there is another website, uh, another video of, of, of Ben where he puts it in, where he's searching it, and it pops up. It's so prevalent. Each one of these people have been contacted by Ben already, and I've also seen uh, their conversations with one another. And what's been the sort of basis um, of that conversation? Well, Randy Moggins is um, very insulting about me, to be honest with you, uh, you know, in his, in his comments. Uh, both Randy Moggins and uh, Miles Johnson have, have put out videos about it, but they're all over the place. And it's basically, in my opinion, a deflector as to what's really going on. Uh, Randy Moggins has had contact with Ben Duchesne's way before I even came in the picture. Carrie Cassidy has also been contacted about this. She's perfectly aware of it. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that Ben says that he finds interesting is all of them, you would think that they would be concerned that something like this was happening around them, but they all seem to like attack him, attack everybody around, make up stories, try, you know, try to do whatever. I haven't heard a peep from Carrie Cassidy. Kerry Cassidy hasn't said a thing. The person who seems to come after me right now uh, is Miles Johnston publicly, uh, uh, Mike Wingley, uh, as well as Randy Moggins. Okay, and, I, and I'll go back to it as well. I mean, it's, it's very I want to stop that saying, but, uh, right know. here. Uh, by the way, uh, man, uh, hey Jeff, Rand Mandy, <laughs> Mandy, Mandy Moggins, <laughs> not Randy Moggins. Yeah, okay. And I love this one too. Uh, Panhandling Cassidy would never do such a thing. Oh, yeah, never, never. Um, he's wearing purple, all right? Uh, the purple tie and the purple background, that is um, a cult. That's a cultic. Also, and I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I got to analyze him. He looks a little sinister to me. I'm sorry, Randy. I don't give a shit anymore what you think. I'm going to talk about you because uh, you're a public person and it's perfectly legal to do so. You have a problem with me? You send me a cease and desist like like all, all big boys do, all right? Otherwise, you needed to shut the up, okay? So, uh, here we go with his purple and purple. We know what purple means. Look into it. It's definitely, de it's, it has to do with witchcraft. And here's his um, Masonic, you know, hand on the chin thing going on here. All right. Oh, you're so sinister, Randy. So sinister. When you go, when, when accusations are made towards people, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, where is where is the proof? Do you know? What I mean? have the proof. The proof is is that you can see the actual web domains. The proof is is that that there's a, a well, series know, where's the of proof? investigations oh, no, where, where's the proof? that well, something's ben up. has already done. Something is tangible. Which is connected the dots. He researched about Ralph Amagran. And, uh, and, and and he's showing screenshots of conversations that are redacted between Robert Stanley and Alex Collier, et cetera. Where's that information? Um, it's, on, it's online. And I just did a video where I mirrored, mirrored one of his videos. I'm going to do two, two more of them, too, as well. Okay, so so if we put the links in the description below on where this yes. information is available from, if we say link, uh, do we want to give the, the link some names or something so that people um, Well, um, the, 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 the website on YouTube is called, uh, let, me, let me pull it up here. Sure. Mark a big mess, I believe is what it is. Okay, I'm just scrolling. Uh, where did I have it? 
Okay, mark a big mess right here. The one that I married, uh, married is called Round 50, the family reunion. And uh, you know, you can you could basically see uh, all of it. Now this this one doesn't show show you how he puts the information in, but this is this is one of them. And again, I've been com commu communicating with uh, with Ben for a year and a half now. He sends me uh, a current uh, shot. And this this actually this actually goes, like I said, it goes to the mainstream media. It goes to major gurus that uh, you know, are part of the name, uh, domain naming industry. For what point then? Where's the money in all this? That, 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 if you, you know, where where does the money take us from? Well, you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure where the money takes us to, but they're definitely using Carrie Cassidy, former White Hat, and all these different people as part of the traffic and a part of the med. See. If you are, if you are, let me, let me bring this up. If you are, if you look at this and look at the highlighted area on that, where it says, uh, it'll say Idlewild Group, former White Hat, Carrie Cassidy, all these things are already tags on the internet anyways. So whatever their mainstream websites are, they're linked to these other dot coms. Okay, you guys. And I wherever that, and some, some of these types of, uh, all right, I want to I'm going to stop it there because it's it's pretty much kind of the, the same stuff going on there. But some else I want to show you. I I'm going to go back to here again, and then I'm I'm going to read some of your messages too. I stumbled on an old recording that I did on a Revolution Radio roundtable. Uh, somebody saved the recording. Thank God, whoever it was, and I uh, it was on the internet. He was making comment uh, comments uh, comments on it. In the broadcast, um, you know, there's a, a big discussion uh, about Nighthawk being a coder and working in pornography. Stephen D. Kelly was on the table because there was some evidence about him uh, being involved with fartdom.com. Okay, which I knew he had worked in 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 it too. So they all have. Everybody seems to have a porn background, in court, including myself. All right, because you know I did not work in online adult media, but I have worked in the um in in the mainstream adult media. Like I wrote a hustler movie. I've told you guys this. I have a whole story about it. So my hand is crossed over in the pie as well. All right, but I didn't do anything that was on the internet. This was DVD sales going to the AVN Awards. But it's all there's an underbelly of pornography connected to this media automatically from hosts to 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 to, to uh you know to, to people writing softcore porn like like Michael Hemmingson. Okay, there's an underbelly, and even even Kevin Moore. Let's talk about Kevin Moore for a minute. And I mentioned this in this video later on. I talk about it. He goes, well, what about, you know, everybody has a past. I go, yeah, everybody has a past, but I tell my past. I'm a, I'm an open book. Hey, yeah, I've done this. I've done that. I don't like the fact that I did this. I'm going to walk in a different direction, but I'm not hiding anybody, anything. This is all warts and all, you know, I, you know, I, I figure, you know, when, when you are a public personality, you know, you might as well cough up your shit before everybody else does and make a joke about it, you know, cause it's going to come out anyways. And, 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 and so, so why are they, why are they hiding it then? You know, uh, I guess like, you know, Kira Cassidy was insulting Kevin Moore by going, oh, you're, 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 you, 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 you worked in porn because you wanted to open a, a sex toy store in Amsterdam or some shit like that. So, so, you know, everybody has a skeleton in their closet, but I want to talk about Nighthawk skeleton in the closet. And I want to, I want you to listen to this. Because wh what if this this is what they're doing? L let me just let me just play it. Because when I when I listen to it, I it like it it freaking blew me away. So I'm gonna stop this screen share and I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna pull up that old Revolution Radio. I I, I re put it up on my channel recently, but you know I mean I title it and and sometimes I think well people don't really know and like you. you Many people, I think, miss it, but I want to make sure you hear it tonight. Um, and so here it is. It, it, it's a behind-the-scenes Freedom of Joyce um, broadcast. And um, I'm going to pull it back. 
Um, I put this video together. I uploaded it on November 6, 2020. Oh, come on. Go back to here. No. Damn it. I want this to be big. Okay, bring, bring me back. Expand. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now I'm getting hot. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to bring it into here. All right. Stop it. Just make sure I do this right cuz I want you to hear it. I want you guys to hear this. I don't want you to miss one part. Okay, here we go. <laughs> They're talking about the porn the now. Crap over and over. You know, it's work and it doesn't pay. You know, and it didn't last very That's, long at all. I, I, the I most thing I ever had to do in my life uh, was one of these sites. You know, I would way rather do a site that was interesting, um, that did something, but here's what I did. I had to convert 9 million pregnant, nasty ass looking, crack ass looking women for 19 freaking days processing files. And then it all died. You know, the dude paid me and the site lasted like 18 minutes. <laughs> you just don't want to do look at it. You know, I tried to tell this dude, are you sure you want to pay me to do this? Because nobody wants to look at this. This is actually making me sick in my stomach to do this. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, you know, there's, a, there's an entire subculture that wants to look at it. And it's like, you know, most of the what fetish this was. Yeah, oh, that, that's true. The weirder the fetish, the more the, the more they people are interested in it. It's crack addict freaking pregnant chicks as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> wait, wait, what was the first part? I heard the second part. I said crack addict freaking pregnant girls. Like literally, like straight up, they look like they were on crack or were on crack? I, I don't know if they're on crack or not, but I'm just telling you. Wow. Oh my God. Crack, yeah, you see, it's the crack, uh, like, <laughs> he tried. He tried to work so like some a subculture that he thought existed. Yeah, exactly. It was disgusting. It was gross. I hated every minute of it, but you know, I got it. I don't it. And it's legal. That's the thing. It's legal. It's legal. I made ten grand. Somebody pay me ten grand. Ten grand. It's the oldest profession. What are you gonna do? Well, it's not even that. It's just somebody paid me ten grand to code up something. Code up. And you know that's what I do for a living. I code stuff up. I code stuff up. I put a coat on stuff. Put a coat on stuff. Check it. Check it. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the matrix. I've been waiting for you. Why am I here? You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision, which has led you inexorably here. You haven't answered my question. The Matrix is older than you know. Okay, did you guys get the the, the, the primary conversation there? Is that is that uh uh, Nighthawk is talking about how he coded up something for people to spend lots of money to watch for 18 minutes. All right. He's coding.
coding up something on the internet somewhere for people to watch for 18 minutes and then it disappears. Well, what could be in there? What could you what could you code up for 18 minutes and then have it disappeared? By the way, in Mike Ringley's obituary, he's known as a as, as a computer tech guy. These people, Randy Moggins, computer. I'm not, I'm just saying. Come on now. Come on. I'm sorry, but you know, in that video with Kevin Moore, in another part of the video, he calls what I'm talking about a conspiracy. I'm the conspiracy theorist talking about the conspiracy theorist. I'm no, I'm sorry, Kevin. You do fucking shows about people channeling, and you want to call me a conspiracy theorist? Uh, it, something is off here. So let's think about this. Are all these guys in porn? Are 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 they involved in snuff? Are they coding snuff up? I'm just curious. I guess that's my point tonight. My point is, what are we really looking at here, folks? Because you got dead people on your hands and you got some skeletons going on. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having issues with all of your stories. I don't give a shit if Taj is going to contact me on Skype and say, oh, yeah, you know, it was at the Awaken Aware conference. You know, you, you're all in bed together and it stinks. And you want to run around and you want to have targeting. You have media to help people who are survivors of satanic ritual abuse or whatever they might be doing in the in with, with government, whatever. And that's my point today. That's my point. I will make sure that you have links. It's good to see all of you here. Let's let, let me see what you guys said before before I take off. SRA doesn't spill a drop. Oh, I see. SRA is swallowing the black goo. Yeah. Okay. Gopher is laughing. Is SRA here? Look at the three thumbs down. Yeah, it like the people thumbing it down is probably Sandra and uh, Taj and Sarah. Get you, make sure you thumb down that video, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry I got so angry, but I just... Okay, here's uh, getting rid of Max while Max was alive and how she kept her mouth shut within the Carrie and Miles video and didn't mention the Miles phone call exposed herself there. Oops. Okay, so let me just let me just blow your mind a little bit uh, before we go. Just let's just talk about what what might really be going on on some level. I showed you that picture where, you know, I thought it was weird on some of the videos where, where Max and Sarah were embraced and Max is looking at her and then Sarah literally has her phone. Like she's all, he's all this way and she's all going, taking a picture of them together in the camera. And I'm thinking, well, who is that for? Like I kept saying like, who's that picture for, you know, or you have like, uh, and I don't want to. I don't want to judge anybody for anybody doing anything. You know, eyes wide shut, orgy like. You know, or if you're doing escort service through it, some of this or whatever might be going on, because like, you know, James Rink mentions. You know, in his like trying to do media about what a drug addict Max was and showing him a footage of him mess, mess, messed up. Why does James Rink have video of, of, of Max Spears drooling on drugs? Do they all get out their cameras and go, we're going to film you right now so that later on when we're going to talk about you, we're going to like, you know, like all of a sudden all this footage and this talking about how he OD'd came up before the uh, toxology report came out. You know, the problem is, is that karmically, if you're being targeted by people and you take your own drug and you're your own demise and they don't have as much karmic responsibility, that's why when you're a targeted individual, you need to really deal with your addictions because there's always somebody there to like put them in front of you to fuck you over with it. 
And, and, and so, you know, and then when you're targeted, what do you want to do? You want to take something so you can calm down because you're so targeted. You're like, well, I really like to have a drink a glass of wine or something or a joint or whatever else you are on medication for that the doctor prescribed you because you can't deal with what's going on around you. Right. I mean, you know, so, so, you know, you, here he is, they, they want to take the person when they, when they're going to, when they're going to get rid of you, or they want to set you up for something, they want to get you out of your element. They like, they want to take you to Louisiana or they want to take you to Poland or they want to. So you're not in, you're, you're not at a place where you have a support system of people that actually really help you, you know? So let's lure them off. Let's, let's put them on the gravy train. And, 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 you know, and, and have this thing, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, but the whole, the whole thing with Carrie Cassidy miles and, and what happened in the first report of his death, it's a huge shit show. It's a shit show and you know it. And it's been a shit show ever since. And it's still a shit show. It's a shit show with Sandra Deroy coming out and like pointing the finger at, at, at Miles. Now, Miles can sit back and go, oh, here's these crazy treater women. Like, you know, I'm the victim. I'm just going to let this thing just blow over. You know what happens when people just say, I've been advised not to say anything? I'm sorry, I, Miles, is that your attorney? Is your attorney advising you not to say anything right now? Is everybody squealing and pointing a finger at each other because they all have a little part in it? Hmm? Who wants to be the good guy here? I, 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 I don't know. I just, I, you know, I, I just, I'm wondering what's really taking place in this. Have people, are we being filmed? Like, I wondered, I've been intimate on Skype with Mr. Kelly several times. You know, or at his house or whatever. And I've even wondered, my, am I being filmed? Because the last time I was there doing something, he stopped and said, oh, I'm not in the camera right now. Yes, yeah, Stephen, I fucking heard it. I'm sick of it. I don't know what's going on. Something is really off. And I really don't give a shit what any of you want to say. You can have all your conversations, do your fucking damage control. I'm out of here. Thanks for listening.